Lift off of the Falcon 9 rocket with science for today and for deep space exploration tomorrow. SpaceX, Elon Musk's rocket company, has taken space travel to new heights. But it started from humble beginnings back in 2002. I especially want to congratulate someone who truly embodies the American ethos of big thinking and risk taking. Since SpaceX, has become the first private company to develop and successfully launch its own rocket into orbit, the first to launch and recover its own capsule. And of course, moments ago, SpaceX became the first private company to put humans into orbit around the Earth. Elon Musk, congratulations, congratulations. Enough with this list of achievements. We could go on and on about what SpaceX has accomplished, but let's get to the juicy stuff. Elon Musk's plan to colonize Mars to become a multi-planetary civilization. What kind of government do you envision for the first Martian colony? We're after and, careful, and, what's your, and what's your title? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> emperor or God Emperor? I don't know. So why did Elon choose Mars? Elon Musk has always been clear about his goal of getting humans to Mars. He wants to make it happen in our lifetime. I, I think th there, there are really two fundamental paths. History is going to bifurcate along two directions. The first one is that we'll stay on Earth forever, until there will be an eventual extinction event. The alternative is to become a spacefaring civilization and a multi-planetary species, which is what he hopes we all want. First of all, of all the planets there are in the solar system, why on Earth did Elon Musk choose Mars? Why didn't he choose the Moon, Venus, Mercury, Saturn? Well, despite what we might think, it's not like we can go shopping for a new planet. Our options are very limited. Oh, I thought it was further away. I, uh, I guess this one's a little small. All right, uh, maybe, maybe we should go check out the other two, huh? In terms of nearby options, there's Venus, which is a high-pressure hot acid bath. So moving over a billion people to Venus would not really be the best option. Mercury, just like Venus, is also way too close to the sun. We can't go to planets like Jupiter, Neptune, and Saturn because they are too far from Earth, and it would take a very long time to get there and would require lots more money. This leaves us with one last option, Mars. You might be asking, what about the moon? We could go to the moon, but Elon believes it would be very hard to become a multi-planetary species because the moon is much smaller than a planet. It doesn't have an atmosphere, and it's not as resource-rich as Mars. It also has a 708-hour day. For comparison, Mars's day is 24.5 hours, and in general, Mars is far better suited to be ultimately scaled up to be its own self-sustaining civilization. The biggest problem right now is the cost, and unfortunately not that many billionaires want to leave their mansions to move to somewhat of a red desert. Right now the cost for just one ticket would be around 10 billion dollars. If SpaceX doesn't lower this price, we will never become a multi-planetary self-sustaining civilization. If we wanted this to be possible, SpaceX would need to get the cost of moving to Mars a little closer to the median housing price in the United States, which is about $200,000. So those are the four, the four elements that need to be achieved. So, that's, so um, whatever, whatever uh, system is designed, uh, whether by SpaceX or, or, or anyone, we think these are the four features that need to be addressed in order for the system to, to really achieve a, a low Cost per, uh, cost per ton to the surface of Mars. How will it work? The rocket booster in the spaceship will take off and load the spaceship into orbit. Then the rocket booster will come back pretty quickly within about 20 minutes. Then the propellant tanker has to go up so that it can fill the tanks of the spaceship in orbit.
When the tanks have been filled and the cargo has been transferred, that's when the ship will leave Earth's orbit. Elon hopes that in some time there will be many ships doing this trip at the same time, but in order for that to happen, as we said before, space travel has to become more affordable. The goal is to have about 100 passengers per trip. The company's goal is to minimize the cost of refurbishment, and make it so that you can have many flights with no repairs at all. In order to get more people to want to go to Mars, it has to be or at least seem really fun and exciting. It can't feel cramped or boring like literally every other spaceship that has been made. The crew compartment is set up so that you can float around, and there will be movies, electropoles, cabins, and a restaurant. As funny, weird, or surprising as it might sound, Elon Musk is trying to make going to Mars a fun experience. I mean, in order to make it appealing um, and, and increase that portion of the Venn diagram of people who actually want to go, um, it's got to be really fun and exciting, um, and it, it can't feel cramped or, um, or boring. So. Uh, the, the crew, the crew compartment or the occupant compartment is set up so that you can do zero G games, you can float around, uh, there'll be like movies, uh, lecture halls, um, you know, cabins, um, a restaurant. It'll be like really fun to go. You're gonna have a great time. One of the challenges of going to Mars is the return trip back to Earth. To do so, we need to refuel once we get to Mars which means that there needs to be a way to create the propellant on the red planet. Fortunately, this is not as much of a hassle as we might think. In fact, it seems like it's one of the easiest challenges SpaceX will face. The atmosphere of Mars is primarily CO2, and there is plentiful ice water stored in the ground. You have CO2 plus H2O to make 2O2 plus CH4, which is our methane. The hardest thing to do would be to find an energy source, Elon is planning on using a large field of solar panels as an energy source. So we should, uh, with, particularly with six ships, there uh, have plenty of landed mass to construct the propellant depot, uh, which will consist of a large array of solar panels, very large array. Then build up the base, starting mostly with one, one ship, then multiple ships, then start building out the city, then making the city bigger, <laughs> even bigger. So how much will it cost? The goal is to make going to Mars affordable for anyone. According to Elon Musk, the first flights will be fairly expensive. But in time, the architecture will allow for the cost of a ticket of less than $200,000, maybe as low as $100,000, depending on how much mass a person and their luggage takes up. It's going to be challenging for SpaceX to get to such a low price. Elon expects to invest in SpaceX money that he will make through his other company, Starlink, and also by servicing the space station for NASA, transferring cargo to and from the International Space Station. So I don't believe finding funds will be such a huge problem unless Elon does something really outrageous in the near future. That's all it is. There's a lot of people in the private sector that are interested in helping fund a base on Mars. Ultimately, this is going to be a huge public-private partnership. That's how the United States was established, and many other countries around the world. Right now, the company is trying to make as much progress as it can with the resources that they have available, and keep moving forward. Hey guys, thanks for sticking till the end. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll keep making these mini documentaries every week as long as you smash the like and subscribe buttons. Also, leave your thoughts in the comments, and let us know if you have any particular video you'd like to see. Pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil.